What's up, gangsters? How about some random? And this is random on a weird day, and this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of random. It's weird because obviously we're in the middle of coronavirus times, and yeah, the world is kind of a strange place right now, but it's a really strange place out here because it is April the 14th or 15th, whatever it is, and there's snow on the ground. <laughs> I live out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and uh, it is normally, at this time of year, you know, constantly in the 70s, and yeah, it is literally 30 degrees outside. We had a snowstorm last night, and it's just a bizarro world out there. So, anyway, I'm rambling. The point to this uh, random is going to be a little bit different, because... Yeah, it's not going to be that random. This is going to actually deal with one specific topic. Uh, and this is one that I see a lot on uh, Facebook modeling groups, and it's a subject of, of nippers. And I feel like when it comes to sprue cutters that, yeah, it's, you know, those, those threads are always entertaining because you've got lots of guys who are like, I just use wire cutters, and my old, you know, side cutters from the dollar store are just awesome. Never had a problem. Well, yeah, anyway, I feel like, Part of the problem is that a lot of guys just don't really understand the physics of sprue cutters. And as with everything, physics is a thing and it makes a difference. So I did this little bit about the physics of sprue cutters uh, while I was working on my Spitfire uh, build video. Uh, and I thought, you know what, this kind of deserves to be its own topic. So anyway, here we go. So let's talk for a second about the physics of nipper blades, all right? If you've got a side cutter, and let me just grab one out of my drawer here, what you basically have is a pair of sharpened wedges. And you can see that pretty readily with these standard side cutters. See that? Two wedges. All right. So what happens is when you've got a gate, all right, and you cut it with said sharpened pair of wedges, all right, this is the gate material here. Okay. So what happens is, as you squeeze your cutter and you've got force going this direction, the wedges basically are trying to force this part of the material and this part of the material apart. So you introduce a tensile force here, call it FT. And what that's doing is in this zone right here, it's basically stretching the material, okay? So if your, uh, if your cutting force, call that FC, all right? If your cutting force is less than your tensile force, what's gonna happen? This is gonna snap. It's gonna stretch and deform and then it's ultimately going to snap. And that's part, of, part, at least, of the noise that you hear when you cut a sprue. And it's deforming. And that's also why it, your little tiny part goes catapulting across the room because you've essentially been putting spring force on, on, that, on that joint and when it finally goes, it launches, okay? And you can see perfectly exactly what I'm illustrating there, okay? All of that white there is stressed and stretched material, and you can see the little titty that's left from where it stretched and ultimately broke from that tensile force, okay? So that is what's happening with a standard side cutter. Now, let's say you graduate to something like this pair of 
Zurons, okay? That is still two sharpened wedges coming at each other. And you're still going to be doing the same thing. Now, it may be not as bad because these wedges are not as, as thick and they're a little bit sharper. But still, okay, that's why the part goes flying off into Never Never Land. It's a better cut than the other one because the more uh, the more obtuse the angle of the wedge is, the more force you apply, and so when it finally snaps, yeah, it's going to be worse. But still, you can see exactly what I'm talking about now. The deal with the with the single blade and anvil style cutter, which is what you've got going on here, these look from a distance like they are also two sharpened wedges, but, but they're not. If you look on this side and you look close enough, you can see that's actually a flat face. It's not a cutting surface. That's the anvil. It's only that very thin blade which is a very thin wedge that is actually doing any cutting. And same thing. And you people say, don't cut sprues, don't cut all the way through a sprue with these, whatever, hogwash. I use my tools and when they stop working good, I replace them. So there we go. See that? Just falls off because we're not generating that wedge force. Yeah, there's still a little bit of deformation or a little bit of discoloration or whatever you want to call it, but you've got that nice clean cut. And it's because the physics are completely different with the single blade and anvil style. How so? All right, so now when you have the single blade and anvil thing, What's happening is you've got your wedge coming in here like this. Obviously not that obtuse, unless it's just a really terrible pair of cutters. But your sprue material is like this now. Okay. Obviously, you're not, you don't have any cutting going on here because you're just holding it against this flat surface while you cut this way. So what happens is the wedge effect is still happening. All right, You're still generating a force in this direction. But instead of stretching right here, what you're doing is bending it like this. Okay? So now, because you're bending it a little bit more, it's much, much less force. It's much less likely to go popping off of there and flying across the room before you actually finish the cut because it isn't really resisting you. So this bending force here is always going to be less than this cutting force here, and it lets you complete the cut before the actual damage occurs the way that it does over here. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. That's the basic physics of how nippers work and why, even at the price that they are, that a single blade and anvil style cutter is always going to perform superior to any kind of side cutters no matter whether they come from Snap-on or the dollar store. Okay, there you go. A little less random than normal, but hopefully useful. Regardless, I appreciate you guys watching, and as always, much love.